Today's video will be about diffraction. So diffraction is a phenomenon of a wave as it travels through two and three dimension space. Uh, it's a bending effect a wave undergoes as it's passing a barrier. So back on falstad.com slash ripple, I have this water tank right here and I've kept it black because I like the sharpness of it. Uh, in front of you, you see a barrier. So could be anything uh, just something that's in the water tank that's going to stop the wave traveling on the left hand side of the screen. When I allow the wave to turn on, pause it there. Um, to my left, you have reflection happening here as the wave travels down. It's this barrier, it's going to reflect back, but let's ignore that. If you were watching that, it was just all blurry, anyways. But let's focus what's happening on the right of the screen. So on the right of the screen, the waves are traveling downwards at a set frequency, four waves made every second. And that frequency is not gonna really matter for the moment. Um, it's traveling down the screen, certain exact same speed, exact same wavelength, that is unchanging. But the one thing that happens right here at the barrier is the wave is going to hug and turn the corner. And now the wave is traveling uh, in a bit of a circular pattern here. This little circular pattern as the wave travels around a barrier, this is known as diffraction. And you'll see the wave gets pretty dark here and that darkness just has to deal with the amplitude for this animation. So the amplitude gets quite a bit smaller. And in fact, um, normally you would see, so I've got dampening right down to zero. Uh, so that means the wave is gonna continue on forever and ever. Uh, but normally you'd start to see, especially as you move further away, it would become completely pitch black over here because the wave would disappear altogether and you'd have what is known as a shadow zone. So this little area here, typically where there shouldn't be any of these waves, so usually where the mouse is, uh, be nice and black and that would be a shadow. So this would be just like standing in front of a spotlight, your body would cast a shadow. Um, that's essentially all the shadow really is, just the blocking of a wave, specifically a light wave, but blocking of a wave. Uh, and so this is diffraction. If I, so if that's my one set frequency, so four waves made every second. So if you can get a, get, uh, get a look at this. If I clear those waves, I'm going to, let's maybe quadruple the frequency. So 16 waves are gonna be made every second. I'm gonna turn this thing back on. You can see the waves are a lot smaller now. Pause it again. Uh, if you feel like it, look on the left and just see the commotion that's going on there again. That's just reflection, you can ignore it. Um, but if you get bored, feel free to look at it. Uh, if I allow this to continue, you'll notice it's quite a bit darker over here than in the last animation. And so that has to deal with uh, a larger shadow zone, right? It's quite a bit darker. So technically, again, this animation is not perfect. Um, this would mean you have a much larger shadow. And this darker line begins, barely shows any diffraction whatsoever before it starts to get really dark. So you actually get less diffraction as you increase the frequency. When you increase the frequency, you decrease the wave, uh, especially if your speed is gonna remain constant. I'm not changing my depth of a water tank, so my speed is going to be uniform, it's not going to change. But since I altered, uh, well, I didn't alter anything really. Um, just the barriers in the way. So the, whatever the frequency is and the, whatever the speed is going to be, that means the wavelength is going to remain true all the way down as it wraps around. So this here is just less diffraction than when we had a, a larger wavelength. So if you decrease the wavelength, you are increasing the frequency. That's what we did here. And increased frequency means less diffraction. <clears throat> So let's just quickly look at that. So if you want, you can pause it here. The diffraction is the bending effect of wave undergoes when moving past the bigger in its path. So that's that curving of the wave. Um, pause side by side. I used a different color scheme. I have it, uh, the contrast is a little bit different so you can kind of point this out a bit better. So when you have low frequency, you'll have a large wavelength. Large wavelengths are going to have more diffraction. They will bend around the corner a lot easier. And when you bend around the corner a lot easier, you have a uh, small shadow zone. So that little shadow zone there is what's being effectively blocked. So absolutely no wave is making it to this point right here. Uh, 
Whereas if you have a high frequency wave, so that means you have a smaller wavelength uh, going across the same barrier, you're going to have a larger shadow zone. So less diffraction occurs. So hopefully you can tell by putting them side by side, less diffraction occurs. So less of the wave bends around the corner. So I usually relate this to uh, sound and, and light at this point, and they're both waves. So if you think of sound wave as the fact that you can stand around the corner and you can hear somebody still speaking, uh, maybe you can hear the music in, if you have a sibling listening to uh, their music in the room, maybe you can hear it in, in your room. So sound is a much, much larger wavelength. So it has an ability to go around the corner. Unlike light, which would be a much smaller wavelength, it doesn't have the ability to move around the corner. That's why you can't see things around the corner. Right? You can only just hear things around the corner. So light is a much smaller wavelength. That's just one piece of evidence on the wavelength size. Um, there's lots more mathematical evidence and other qualitative evidence, but uh, if you can just think in this term, it's a lot easier to hear uh, around the corner than it is to see around the corner. Likewise, for back to music, uh, sound has a lot of variance in their wavelengths. Uh, it can go from just a little bit less than uh, sound waves are just slightly less than 20 millimeters uh, in size, and those are the really high pitched sounds uh, to about 20 ish meters, a little less than that, uh, but about 20 meters uh, in length. Um, <clears throat> and that's just at their extreme ends. Uh, so typically the large wavelengths uh, for sound would be the bass notes. And you'll probably notice uh, when you hear cars thumping down the street, uh, you can usually hear their bass of their music. And that's because the bass notes have an easier time. They're a much larger wave, so they have an easier time bending around the corner. Uh, there's a couple other factors involved there, but if you just think of the simplest factors, uh, large wavelengths can make it around the corner and they diffract more. So that's the key word today, diffraction. Larger waves diffract better than smaller waves. And you can't hear the high hat of the drums, for instance, around the corner. Unless somebody turns up the volume, that's a whole different story altogether. You might shake the whole wall. Um, so that's just two examples of diffraction. Um, <clears throat> now, to be invisible, this is where we go back to Falstad. Um, I'll give you two examples. So if you have a barrier in the way, so here I've got just a box. Uh, this box is larger than the wave itself. Up top, I have a plane wave. So if I let this thing travel, so the plane wave, you've got a bit of reflection happening at the top. The plane wave is going to travel down, and I'll just let this play. I'll pause it there. So when it comes to this box, the wave is bending around. Now, again, I've got dampening. Actually, let's try to make it more realistic. I'll put dampening up, let this play once more. So it's a little bit darker, it's still not perfect. Uh, but essentially when you have an object in the way, it's not perfect, it's quite a bit darker here, it creates uh, a shadow. But if you go far enough away, um, and if I let this thing keep on going down past what I'm recording on my screen, eventually this crest would become, uh, well, I guess, sorry, the red is a trough, or it doesn't really matter. The trough would eventually flatten out and become normal again and it wouldn't look like there was anything obscuring the path of this wave. So it would just bend completely around. But immediately right after, you might get a bit of disturbance. You might create a shadow. If it's, if it's a, a dim light, um, you would have a bit of a shadow there. If it's really bright light, uh, think of like an ant walking across uh, the headlight of a car. You probably wouldn't notice that ant at a really far distance because you're really far away and eventually the waves will flatten itself out and fix itself. Uh, as far as these lines here, I'll explain those in the next video. Uh, but when you're far enough away, the wave will reconnect. Uh, you'll notice the most disturbance if you're standing right directly behind it. Now, this is not invisible, but it's close. Um, before I do that, okay, nope, let's just go straight to this. Um, I've got a tiny little box. Now, this tiny little box is uh, quite a bit smaller than the actual wavelength. So I'll just pause it right there. Uh, quite a bit smaller than the wavelength, so I could fit this right inside uh, that little red uh, crest, <clears throat> trough, whatever one that is, uh, it will fit inside. And so uh, when you have an object that's smaller than the wave that's encountering it, it's going to behave as though it's invisible. 
So as the wave passes through, there is no visible disturbance of the wave whatsoever. So this is also why if you're standing in the, in the wave pool, especially around waist deep, or even getting, uh, yeah, about waist deep, you'll notice that the water wave will just move around you because the water wave itself is thicker than your body, uh, for most of us at least. Uh, and so there won't be any noticeable disturbance behind that. So this is where we can start thinking of uh, things like electrons and, and, and subatomic particles uh, where they're smaller than that of the light waves. So when that happens, the light doesn't, isn't able to interact with it because the light waves are a lot larger than the electrons, the protons, the nucleus of most, uh, most um, elements, all elements, I don't know, I don't know why I said most, uh, the nucleus of all elements, they would be individual elements they would be smaller than the wavelength of light and so therefore it just passes by. Now of course if you grab uh, a, a chunk of, of copper, a uh, kilogram of copper, obviously there's enough uh, atoms of, and elements of every single one of those pieces of copper together that they become larger than the wavelength of light. But if we're just talking about individual atoms, uh, they are much too small and therefore you will not notice any diffraction and therefore they're invisible to our eye, so to speak. That's also why so often someone can stand in front of a speaker and they won't really muffle the noise, especially again when it comes to the bass notes, because the bass notes have a much larger wavelength than a human body. And so therefore the bass notes have an easy time uh, curving around the body like there's absolutely nothing in front of it. So my next little thing, oh, hold on, notes, forget about the notes. So <clears throat> again, you can pause it here if you want. This is what you basically see in the classroom. Um, small objects, especially if they're smaller than the wavelength itself, you, you might notice, depends on how big we're talking about, you might notice a slight disturbance, but normally I just make that a nice straight line. Uh, there'd be no visible diffraction, whereas when you start getting to larger objects about the same size of the wavelength and, and larger, you'll get, some, you'll get some diffraction. And if you move further away from the, from the object, the wave will fix itself and mostly become straight again. Um, creating just a very, very small shadow zone. But it all depends on how big this object is that's in the way. So you're only really invisible once you're smaller than the actual wavelength of light or sound or whatever's making the wave. Um, <clears throat> so from that, what happens? Well, there's, I spoiled it. What happens when you have an opening? Let's go back to Falstad. I've got an opening here. I'll just clear that because I forgot to before I started hitting record. So I've got a tiny little opening, we call that a small slit. I got a tiny little opening and I've got a straight plane wave. Uh, and when I put those two, put that opening where it is, nice and small compared to the size of the wavelength, allow it to proceed. When the wave passes through, it creates a point source wave, half a point source wave, but uh, the flat wave can be turned into a round wave just by having that little opening there. You're gonna get diffraction on both sides, quite a lot of diffraction, but you get diffraction on both sides and you end up creating a point source wave, very much like if you had just a point source there and I turn that thing on, right? Aside from the fact that I'm only getting half of this because again, the other half is on the other side of the barrier, it's basically given us this basic example of a droplet of water. Um, sorry, my drop down bar, there we go. Um, <clears throat> so just like you see right here, you have uh, diffraction, you've got a little bit of a shadow zone there, a little bit of a shadow zone there, a lot of bending of the wave, a lot of diffraction. If we increase that opening, so this is a much wider gap, right? Much, much wider. Um, why did I touch that? You got a much wider gap. you'll see that there's not as much diffraction. You're still getting quite a bit of a lot of a straight wave part there, a little bit of interference. I don't think I got them quite lined up right. So you got a little bit of noise right there, but uh, it doesn't bend as much. And you can see right here, it's quite a bit darker uh, than it was over here. It stays light, brighter, a bit while longer compared to uh, this one over here. So it gets pretty dark, pretty quick in comparison, because again, uh, the other one had the slit right where the mouse is and it didn't get this dark until we're at the same point. So it diffracted less and it got darker. Um, so if you open this thing up, you get quite a lot, uh, you get less diffraction, if you will. 
So that is one thing to uh, recognize. Um, <clears throat> if I do one more thing, I'm gonna play the frequency. So if I have that same original narrow opening and I, let's see here, let's increase the frequency. Let's really increase it. Let's go six times this, uh, the frequency. So waves, as you can see, are quite a bit smaller. So we have much, much smaller waves. And when you have much smaller waves, you can see it gets dark real quick. It's not perfect. I know I, on my screen with my resolution, I can see some waves still, but uh, hopefully you should be able to notice that it stays nice and bright here, right down the center, but it gets pretty dark right away. And so you have less diffraction uh, than you did before. So less of the wave makes it through. Right, a lot more of it gets blocked. It doesn't diffract as much, doesn't bend around as much. Again, on this thing, it's, doesn't, it's not perfect uh, as compared to when you have a much larger wave. So I'll just uh, change the size of the wavelength. You can see already it stays brighter as it goes across. Right? So you end up with much nicer waveforms when compared to uh, a smaller wave. So small uh, decreased frequency means you have an increased wave, which means you have more diffraction. So review, if you have a small opening, you get lots of diffraction. If you have a large opening, you don't get as much diffraction. A small opening basically turns it into a point source or a droplet of water. If you wanna think of that, just dropping water into a tank from the faucet. Um, so it sort of turns into a point source. If you increase the frequency, you're going to get a much smaller wave and smaller waves have a harder time making it through this barrier. So you get a lot less diffraction when you have a smaller wave. I think I will stop there for today. Uh, if you have any questions, again, just send me an email and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.